In this problem, we have a centrifuge that, in some amount of time, is accelerating from rest to a new angular velocity in that amount of time. The problem asks us to find the number of revolutions in that time. Now, there are a few different ways you could do this. Uh, the first way you might try is to use the rotational kinematics equations, which I've written out here, but you might notice that none of these three equations you can use right away, like because we uh, don't have all the variables uh, that we're given, like we don't have the angular acceleration of the centrifuge. So if you wanted to use these equations, then you would first have to calculate the angular acceleration, and then from that use a different equation to find theta, which would represent the uh, the angular displacement. But there is another way you could do this that would require only one step, and it's to make use of the, the, the lesser known fourth kinematic equation that takes advantage of the average angular velocities if you don't know the acceleration. Though, of course, this only works if the acceleration is uniform, which the problem does specify. So theta is equal to the average angular velocity, which can also be written as being equal to half of the sum of the initial angular velocity plus the final times t, time. And then, of course, the initial angular velocity is zero, so you can just kind of ignore that term. So this is the equation that's going to work, but we'll also need to do a unit conversion on the 15,000 uh, revolution per minute. We want the units consistent since the time variable uses seconds and the angular velocity uses minutes. So somewhere in this equation, when you type it into your calculator, you're going to want to use the unit conversion for converting from minutes to seconds, since there are 60 seconds in one minute. So the way I would do this, for example, is just plugging in the values the problem gives us for one half the final angular acceleration times t, and then I would multiply it by the chain link conversion of one minute over 60 seconds, so that the minute in the numerator cancels out the minute in the denominator of the RPM. An alternative way of thinking about it is that the second in the denominator could cancel out the seconds in the numerator for the time variable, which would convert the time from seconds to minute doesn't change anything, just an alternate way of thinking about it. Point is, if you plug in the values the problem gives us using this little formula, then we find a number of revolutions of about 3 times 10 to the power of 4 revolutions. So 3,000 revolutions. And that's the number of revolutions that the centrifuge undergoes, and that should be the answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing since that'll help me make future videos like this. If you have a question, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. If you have a request for a future video, I have a Discord server linked in the description where I try to take requests. But that's all for this video, so I hope you have a lovely night. Bye bye